Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey friends, welcome back to another one of my videos. Today we are going to be making a t-shirt for the one and only Phoebe Bridgers. And if you are new to my channel, my name is Kel. I use they them pronouns and I'm a graphic designer who primarily specializes in merchandise design. And I've worked for pretty much all of your favorite artists. And Phoebe Bridgers is someone that I have not had the opportunity to work for yet, maybe one day. Um, but I welcome you to my community here on YouTube. This is a safe space, so everyone is welcome, except for people who like to harm other people. Those people are not welcome here, but everyone else is of course welcome in my design community. My last video touched a little bit on some graphic design resources. And in that video, I talked a little bit about scanning your own stuff and I'm gonna show you in this video how I scan pretty much the majority of my resources that I use because I do a lot of commercial work and I can't use a lot of resources I find online even if it is from like a stock site so I found that making my own assets is the best way to clear legal uh, problems so today we're gonna be scanning some flowers and making a very cool t-shirt maybe some more I don't know well I guess we'll see for Miss Phoebe Bridgers because because I'm a huge fan. If you've been following me for a while, I did a poster like a year and a half ago when Punisher came out because I knew it was gonna be a banger album because I've been a Phoebe fan for years and it was a banger album and now she's skyrocketed. So I would like to make a t-shirt for her and I'm really excited because I have a pretty fun idea in mind. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you pick up and learn a few things as always. That's what my channel is for. So, um, I guess let's let's go ahead and get into this. I'm I'm really 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 excited, and I um, mm, 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 that is all. So the first step of this entire process is going to be scanning these flowers. Now you can get flowers from pretty much anywhere. You can go outside, go for a little walk, pick some from your yard, your neighbor's yard, um, wherever, or you can run to like your grocery store, farmers market. And I found that out of all of the things that I've scanned over the past couple of years, there are some flowers that work better with scanning and then there are some flowers that work better with just taking really high res photos of and using those as if they were scans and just cutting them out from there like just shooting them on a dark or a light background depending on the color of the flower um, because our ultimate goal is to make these really easy to cut out when we throw them into photoshop so we can save ourselves some time so i've learned that my favorite place to shop flowers specifically for my clients is from flower shops and the best ones are ones that you can go and hand pick the stems that you want because you can get more unique flowers. You can really think about the flowers that you want to be able to scan or like leaves and other like sticks and twigs and things. Um, you can be more particular about what you want to scan because sometimes like flowers from like, like if you buy them like a big pack, you get a bunch of like mums, but really you only need like two or three mums, but you're gonna get like a pack of 30 of them. So if you have the opportunity to find like a local flower shop, or if you could just go outside and pick flowers from your garden, even better, because you can just be more particular with the flowers that you're scanning. So this is from Solaby Botanicals here in Portland. I went to uh, one of their shops and just handpicked some flowers from their floral section. These were a little bit on the pricier side. These were about $30 for all of these um, just individual stems which I feel like is a bit steep, but they are high quality flowers. Like this one just really wants to like have a moment. So we'll let her have her moment. Stunning, stunning. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I used to want to be a florist before I started committing to design more seriously. So I've got a lovely array of some random flowers. We've got some lovely little uh, mums here, some other things that I do not remember the names of, but I'm looking primarily for flowers that will be uh, easy to lay flat on a scanner. So those are ones that kind of come out from the center and lay this way versus roses tend to be a little bit harder to scan um because they're so thick and you you have to like pretty much like slam them in a scanner and that's not really something I want to do. I also have an Ethereum here because it's very sexual and provocative and I feel like that's very unbrand for Miss Phoebe. Um, I did pick up some little garden roses or like spray roses, whatever these are called, just to have, I already have scanned roses quite a bit before. So I have some in my archive, but I wanted to just do this all. So I show you, I can show you how I scan my roses. And then I'm, I'm just looking for ones that like, like this really great shape to scan ones like these. Hello, focus, focus on these. 
So like ones like these are really great. And also little, little flowers like these also fantastic because they're great filler flowers and you can use them to kind of like make a collage, which is what we are going to be doing today with all of these. I also tend to get some greenery, um, things like this, because good texture, very versatile. I generally like if I find a leaf on the ground or anything, I will just pick it up, take it home and skin it um, because you, you can never have too many scans of things. So um, yeah, I'm very, very excited to show you all of these. Um, and I wanna thank everybody who joined my stream last week because I got this idea for this video from that stream. So if you want to follow me on Twitch, which is where I stream now, you should go over to twitch.tv slash Lauren. Follow me on there because I will be streaming more on like, I'm trying to do more of like a weekly basis depending on like my work schedule. So go do that and you can contribute to my video ideas if you would like but with all of that being said let's go ahead we're gonna switch over to my scanning view setup thing so you guys can see how i prep and scan these flowers <laughs> Okay, so I am here at my little side table next to my desk. Um, I have my scanner right here. It is all plugged in, um, but I'm going to cut these flowers. So I've just been keeping them in water. Sometimes I dry them out and then sometimes, I don't know, they have, they have different, different looks. So sometimes I like them dried, sometimes I like them raw. You can also dry them by putting them either in a dehydrator or like in your toaster oven. Just a little fun, fun fact, fun fact. But this does not have to be very serious. I'm just gonna cut these mums right below the little stem, not the stem, right below the, the little flower part. And I'm looking for ones that like are distinguishable from one another. So like this one is a good one. And then I'm also gonna cut like a, a smaller one with a little bit of a different shape because I want it to all, uh, let me be in frame here. I want it to be unique. I don't want it to look like I just took the same one and repeated it a bunch. So we're gonna take a couple of these. Let's see, I'll just cut another one of these small ones right here. So I've got five right there, five little little mums. Put these back in the water. And then I got some of these yellow and orange ones because when these are scanned, no matter what like color overlay I add to them, you will be able to see the contrast difference between these. So like no matter what color I add over it, like a gradient map, you will still have like the darker contrast in the center of these versus like this will just be more of like same color texture, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing. Cut some big ones, cut some small ones medium ones, another small one. So I have nine of these mums. I, these could totally not be mums. I think they're mums, like pretty sure. So got my scanner right here. This is the Canon 9000F Mark II. This is originally for like scanning film strips, but I've adapted it to be my multi-purpose scanner that I use for literally everything. <laughs> Make sure it's clean. I throw a lot of shit on here and it gets really gross sometimes, but I'm going to just boot it up now. So I'm just going to arrange these on here. And so they have like some distance in between them. So it's easy for me to cut them out, but I'm just going to just lay them down. So because this will scan against white, because the inside of this lid is white, it will scan against white. So sometimes that's really hard to uh, cut out. So I'm gonna scan it against white, show you what that looks like. And I'm th then I'm going to put a black sheet of paper over top. You can use like a t-shirt too, anything that's dark instead of scanning against white, just so it's easier for us to cut out and post. So now that we've scanned that with the lid down, um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like with putting just a black sheet of paper over top. All right, I got a black sheet of paper here. Okay, so I found that the black sheet of paper works best. Um, if you need more coverage to block out light, you can use like a, a t-shirt. I've done that a number of times. So now I'm gonna go through and throw some of these other guys on the scanner. So I'm just gonna take all these off. So I got this lovely little one. I don't know what this is called. I really like this one, but I mostly bought it because I like the, uh, let's get this to focus. There we go. I really like the little flowers on this. I think they're really interesting. So I'm gonna cut some of these off so we can scan them. All right, so we've got five of these. These might be really hard to scan because they have like depth to them like that. So I might end up just photographing these first before I crush them in my scanner. And same thing with like this uh, big white flower too, just to be safe, because they're so delicate. I'm gonna cut my anthurium right below 
the head. I know this isn't technically a flower. This is technically a leaf, um, but I cut it right here. And this has also some depth to it. So same deal. I'm going to photograph this against a black sheet of paper um, so I can then cut it out before I crush it in my scanner. Cut some of these little branches. Lots to scan, lots to scan. So before I scan those, I'm going to go ahead and try to photograph these to the best of my abilities. Um, keep them nice and as flat as possible. So you don't need a fancy camera for this. Most phones will do just fine. I'm just taking this on my iPhone. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these, these other flowers. All right. So now we're gonna throw all of these onto my scanner and then I'm gonna do a few different scans and you'll see those right here. Now that I've dragged everything into Photoshop, that is the program I'm going to be editing all of these in, it is Modelo time. So I have all of these in Photoshop, um, save these out because sometimes uh, these files can crash your program. So I'm gonna start with this one, these little like stick things. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna do is adjust my levels to bump up the contrast. Part of me wants to keep these as smart objects, the other part of me doesn't want these to be smart objects because that would make my file really big. I'm trying to avoid that. This is currently eight and a half by 11 and a half ish at 300 DPI, which is a pretty big file. And I have like 15 layers in here. So, you know, we're gonna try to keep this file size to a minimum so we don't crash our computer. Wow, that was terrible. Of course, this is not gonna work on that one, that's it. So comparing and contrasting scanning against white versus scanning against black, here's it against white, here's it against black. So it is a lot easier. You don't have to deal with like that rainbow distortion. That's different for every scanner. But let's go ahead and manipulate this. I'm gonna rasterize this. Cool, my select subject is sucking today. Love that for me. Look at my little note highlight. Stunning. All right, I mean, that, that worked a decent amount. So that was using the object selection tool and then you draw and it'll select whatever within that. That's not too bad. I'm not looking for a super precise cutout of everything since all of these will have a pretty heavy effect on them. So that works pretty well for that one. Let's go ahead, duplicate that and then apply that layer mask delete that layer mask. So we got that. It works, it works decently for me. I'm not, I'm not too picky because I'm gonna manipulate it more later. Always a cat hair in all of my work. Love that for me. Let's use that same object selection, command J. I'm gonna do that with all of these little ones because I want as many little flowers as possible. Decent job. A lot of these still have the black in between, but the t-shirt that we are making is black, so I'm not too concerned about it right now. Let's go ahead and grab all of these. That's still not grabbing. I'm gonna have to manually cut that out. I'm not looking forward to it. All right. Let's do the same thing with this one. Oh, that did a decent job. My select subject, sometimes it really sucks. All right, not bad, not bad. That one sucked. Not using that one. All right, these were the photos I took. Let's see if I can use my lasso and then convert it. Mm, yeah, I can. All right, we got those. Just additional little ones that look a little bit different. See, that one ended up working out just fine. So I have a bunch of these pictures of my Ethereum on a few different angles. I like that angle a lot. All right, select subject like some things, she does not like other things. And let's try one on this darker one. Uh, it worked, but we'll see if we can use that. Cool. That's decent, decent, okay. Oh, I didn't even, ah, there we go, okay, cool. So now we have all of those cut out. Now we're going to start adding some threshold effects and gradient map effects. So you can see how I'm gonna put all of these flowers together and create a beautiful little rib cage that we're gonna put on the front of a team. Let's go. So like I said, the goal with this is to make a beautiful rib cage. So let's go ahead and, oh, world's loudest truck driving by, rib 
cage. PNG. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping for something kind of like this that we're gonna mimic. Mimic? Why did I say that's a weird mimic? Please, I want this, but higher res. This one? Okay, that one isn't bad. Let's just go with that for now. All right, invert it, send it to back. I'm gonna convert all these individual ones to smart objects so I can scale them down and I don't kill, so I don't kill my resolution. I don't need those. Let's go ahead and isolate uh, 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 all these. All right, let's convert all these to smart objects. I wish there was a shortcut. If there's a shortcut to convert a bunch of things to a smart object all in once without making them all the same smart object, that would be really cool. Let me know down in the comments if you know a such, such shortcut exists. All right, now I'll worry about my sticks later. Okay. So the fastest way to probably get the look that I'm going for is probably threshold, but sometimes threshold sucks. So I'm gonna show you another way to do it, and that is through a gradient map. So we just have, um, I'm sorry, there's a plane crashing outside. Um, so we just have a regular black and white gradient map, just like this, and it kind of converts this to black and white. But what we're gonna do is pull these points of contrast really close to one another and move them around. All right, I think that's pretty good. I will want to add a, like some sort of like noise effect. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, computer is glitching. There we go, okay. My new favorite way to do noise is through this window, whatever this window is called. What is this window called? Um, through my filter gallery instead of going down here because you just, have more control than just going here to add noise. But if you go up to filter gallery and then to, is that under texture? Oh, it's under grain. Um, so yeah, you have a few different types that you can do, which depending on the look you're going for, can be fun. Um, sometimes clumped is good. If you want like more of like this kind of effect, like a more vintagey, grungier effect. I'm not sure if that's exactly what I'm going for, but let's go back to my, you know, let's try soft. Sprinkles, clumped, contrasty, whatever that means, enlarged. Something that could that could be good. Mm, I think we lose too much detail. Let's go back and do our regular old grain. I just want to introduce like a little bit of texture. Yeah, I think honestly, you can't go wrong. So let's go ahead and scale that down. Just gonna slap that right there. And then we're just gonna do essentially the same thing, but for everything else. So you could do just an overall gradient map, but I feel like the best way to add it is to do it individually because it won't work the same on every everything you're working on. So lots of fun. It's gonna start moving those up to the top as I complete all of these individual <laughs> effects. All right, not bad, not bad. Okay, cool, that works. Let's pull that up to the front. Ah, I forgot this one was on what? I will just cut it off right here. There, oops, almost there. Oh no, it still has paper on it. Okay, so we got this one. I'm gonna convert that to a smart object. This one, convert to smart object. Okay, so now we've got these wonderful sticks that I can use that I wanted to use mostly for like the ribs because they're very rib-like. Gotta be careful with your warp tool. Sometimes it can do a little too much. She can work a little too hard, but sometimes it does exactly what you need it to do. Okay, not bad, not bad. I'm not disappointed with how that looks. We got this guy. Let me flip it vertical again.
Ooh, yeah. See, like this is exactly like what I had in mind when I originally had this idea. Fantastic. And I will probably add like a small white stroke on the outside of that so we don't lose the entire um, edge of the petal. I delete that layer mask and add that. I'm gonna go ahead and group these. And then I'll show you what I mean with that stroke. So when I say stroke, we're just gonna add a white stroke. Sometimes I do center, but we want a really, really small stroke like that. Or what we could also do is an outer glow. Sometimes this works a little bit better because you can use noise, which sometimes looks a little bit more natural, I think. Like instead of like a regular stroke, like it's just more of like an, a very small outline. Bump up that noise in my opacity, bump this back down. Yeah, like something like that I think looks really nice, just so you don't lose that bottom detail. So cute, I'm obsessed. Okay, I think that's a really good, good spot we are at. I think it's time for us to now work on the back. And I have a couple things in mind that I wanna do, but this will be the front of the t-shirt. I'll make some like small adjustments as we start to mock it up and everything. But I think we are off to a really, really solid start right here. Yay. And then group all of that. Maybe, do I need like another one of these? Like another set of vertebrae down here? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Regardless, let's go ahead and start the back. All right, friends, we are here to do the back of my t-shirt. I've got an 11 by 14 artboard open. 11 by 14 is the standard artboard size for any sort of screen printed piece of art. So if you're ever making a making a t-shirt, 11 by 14 at 300 DPI is your way to go. So what I'm thinking is this really cool big back print that is one of my favorite Phoebe lyrics. I have so many and I was sitting here thinking, texting some of my friends who are also Phoebe fans, asking them what they think. The cat scratching at the door. Um, what their favorite Phoebe lyrics are. And I always come back to the last song off of Punisher. And I wanted to do a lyric off of Punisher instead of off of uh, Stranger in the Alps, which I, I don't know which album is my favorite. It's a tight contender. But what I'm thinking about doing is just the lyric, I know the end, or not, not I know the end, that's the song. The lyric, the end is here. I've used it in my past artwork um, for the poster I did for Phoebe last year because it's just, it resonates with me really well because I'm a very dark person, but I feel like that lyric resonates with me personally the most. <laughs> And since this is my project, I can do whatever I want. But there are so many Phoebe lyrics. There are so many Phoebe lyrics that are so good, but I want to pick something that I know will look nice on a t-shirt. Nothing like too grim. Like there are, like Phoebe's got great grim lyrics, but I don't know how many of them I would want to put on a t-shirt for people to wear. So I think the lyric we're gonna go with is the end is here. And then we'll do a little Phoebe Bridgers thing at the bottom. Um, I had this idea. It's in my notes app. I had it when I was, Hi. Um, and I wrote it down in my notes app and it just says, I'm, and I'm trying to decode it now, a uh, script behind tall sand, well it, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll read, read you what it autocorrected to and then I will tell you what I mean by it. But it says, a script behind tall, Sam's terrifying type, middle overlap knockout. I think what I meant by that <laughs> was a script behind tall, sans serif type, middle overlap knockout. I think I meant that I knock some of the script out of the sans serif type. I think that's what I mean. So that probably doesn't make any sense to anyone who does not know my high brain. But um, let's try to let's try to decode that right now. So I was looking over on Adobe Fonts and I found this font called Cinder. So I downloaded it. I was thinking about doing some sort of black letter typeface for this because I used a black letter typeface in my last Phoebe project and I know that she uses a lot of it in her merch. I'm thinking about doing Cinder as my main typeface and then I'm gonna throw a nice little script behind it to try to decode my high idea. So many high level ideas. So. And then let's do, I don't know what I was trying to go with with this idea I had. Let's go with one of my favorite scripts. Oh yeah, let's do Kita. I haven't used Kita in a while. And this is not gonna make any sense. 
I feel like that that doesn't work at all, Kelly. What were you, <laughs> what were you, what were you thinking here? Um, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. Gonna execute the idea before I decide no. So in the meantime, we are going to be adding a distress layer, which is also linked below if you want to download the distress I use, um, to create kind of like this hand printed effect. So I'm just going to drop it into my file, select the inverse and then mask the layer. Then we are going to duplicate that layer, delete the distress mask, and then we're going to set the fill to zero. Open up your layer styles to inner glow and set it to white. We are mimicking this kind of like realistic printed effect that can really like soften up a screen printed design, but you can also do this with paper textures and just like other like concrete textures are good too. But it's a good technique all around just to know. Um, you can also do it with like splatter or like spray paint textures to achieve kind of like a similar effect. So right now we are looking at this edge right here to see that duplicated layer with the inner glow. And this just helps the design look like it was roughly uh, printed just with one screen. Let's go ahead and add some stars. So one way that I've made stars in the past is to download a little star brush. Um, let's see if I can find mine. That's not the star brush I'm looking for. I know Gus. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I downloaded this star pack from somewhere. It's really not the best, but like, this is what the stars look like. They're really low res, but they make good little uh, kind of like blowout effects like this, if that makes any sense. And I've used them a ton for other projects. They're just really great, like little things, you know? Add some nice little detail to your little pieces. Mm, that doesn't quite look as good as I wanted it to. I'm like so bad at like randomly placing things. Okay, so we've got one there. My threshold is going over my entire piece, but that's okay for now. So we've got that little star brush thing. So again, without the threshold, that's what it looks like. But when you add the threshold, it gives it like that nice blotchy kind of like stamped star effect. But yeah, I think I got it from like Brush Easy or something, like just some random like star Photoshop brush. Doesn't have to be anything complicated. Let's go through some of my other star brushes that I have. Okay, yeah, I remember this one. Okay, it's giving me steering wheel. Not so much a fan of that one. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, ooh, that one like fits like really well in that little, little like archway right there. Love. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, I really like where this is going. I feel like I need another really big shine like that, like somewhere over here. And then I think we are good. Let's see what this one look like. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, I love that. This is so fun. You can like get carried away so, so easily with this. Okay, I feel like I need like a little something like right there. Okay, if I don't get that one out up there, do a little like twinkle right there. I kind of like the threshold effect that this gave on the rest of the type and not just like the stars, even though that was my original intention. I kind of like it. Guys, I think, I think we've reached it. I think we've reached our end point. I really like how this is turning out. Maybe I need a little like star next to like Phoebe's name here. Ooh, that's so cute. What about this? No, not that one. What about this one? Ooh, yes, yes, this is perfect. Ah, oh, this is so cute. I'm obsessed. I don't want it to like take away like from the legibility of her name. Maybe I need like another little like twinkle over here. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. I see you, Miss Phoebe. Guys, this looks really cute. All right, let's go ahead. Let's pull up a pull up a little um mock up. Maybe I'm gonna drop my distress on here again. Love, love, love. So great. What mock-up do I want to use? I have so many mock-ups. Maybe I'll pull the one I used for my Taylor Swift video because I like that mock-up a lot. Now I did not say this blank very well. Yeah, let's use this one.
Okay, much better. It's wrinkly, yes, but that's fine. Well, let's go and add color overlays. We got a nice, nice green, but let's go for like a nice, nice charcoal. Maybe we'll set that to like a lower opacity and send it behind our shadow layer, just like that. And yeah, got our front and our back of our wonderful, wonderful Phoebe Bridgers tee. Should I add a little sleeve print? I think we could add the little Phoebe tag we did on the back down here to the sleeve, because I think it's really cute. And then we got a cute little sleeve print, which looks fantastic. Ah, oh, banger tee, banger tee, that was, Nice, okay, cool. So yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. That's pretty cool. And now to thank the sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. Hey, Kel, quick question. Um, so I was starting to work on my portfolio and I had uh, really no idea where to start. Do you have any tips for me? Uh, yeah, you could check out my redoing my entire graphic design portfolio if you have nowhere to start, but do you have some work ready to go? Yeah, I have a couple projects already done. I just don't really know where to go from here. Like, should I like make like a website or should I make like a PDF? What, what, should, what should I do? So making a PDF of your portfolio is really great, but if you want to have your work viewed from anyone anywhere in the world, you should definitely have a website. I've seen Squarespace ads before. Is it really as easy as everybody says it is? Yep, Squarespace is as easy and versatile as everyone says it is. I've been using it for years to host my own personal portfolio, but they have tons of beautiful, fully customizable templates for you to choose from. If you want a more simple website of just a couple of galleries and a contact page to host your portfolio, they got you covered. If you want something a little bit more complex, you want an e-commerce store, they got you covered on that. There are so many templates for you to choose from, or if you want something more simple, bare bones, they've got you covered, no matter what. Okay, but what if I like run into like an issue or I'm like confused, I don't really know how to do something, like what 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 should I do then? Like how do I how do I fix my website? What if I have like a very specific question about like the template I'm using? What do I do then? Well, if you have an issue or a question about Squarespace in general or about your template specifically, Squarespace has a huge archive of blog posts breaking down common troubleshooting issues and also each individual template has its own blog post about all of its features, any sort of issues that you might run into with different versions or if you want to add something, take something away. There's everything broken down for you in a really easy to understand blog post. And if you have any issue outside of that, you're still not finding the answer that you're looking for, you can always contact Squarespace's award-winning customer service to help you out with whatever issue you might be having. And they've helped me so many times and they've always helped me resolve my problem. Okay, okay. You have many good points there. Um, is there a discount code potentially that you could give me so I can save maybe like 10% on my order? Yeah, you can head over to squarespace.com slash to get 10% off your first purchase. That's K-E-L-L-U-R-E-N. And if you're building your portfolio for the first time, that's really exciting, but you should be sure to save as much money as you can because it's very scary. It's a new little thing. So save 10% off your first purchase with my code KELLAUREN and have a good time building your portfolio because that's really exciting and you should be excited about it. So I'm proud of you for putting it all together. Thank you so much. Um, carry on with the rest of your video. Uh, that, that's all. Okay. Bye. <laughs>I think that's all I have for this video. Um, if you made it this far, there is a link in the description where you can go download all of the assets that I used in this video, including my working files, if you'd like to pull from them. You can use the files for whatever you would like to use them for. You can use the flowers for whatever, I don't really care. But if you do make some art with the flowers that we made in this video, uh, send me a picture. Send it to me on Instagram, tag me on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And I'd like to see what you guys can do with it because I think flowers are really fun to work with. They're a fun organic shape and you can do a lot with them. And I didn't even use like all of the flowers that I had um, picked up from the flower shop. So use them for something cool. And I hope you enjoyed this. Miss Phoebe, if you would like to hire me, let me know. Um, that would be very cool. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I had so much fun making this. I love Phoebe so much. And thank you for sticking around for a second Phoebe Bridgers video. Here we are. You know what? A year later, it was time for another one anyway. Um, a year later, a year and a half later. It's been a, been a, been a minute. Anyway.
anyway, that is all I have for you. Uh, be sure to check me out on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Kel Lauren, K-E-L-L-E-R-E-N. And follow me on there so I can start streaming on Twitch more regularly. We're doing all sorts of fun stuff over there. So be sure to go check me out over on Twitch. And um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you uh, for tuning in to all my videos. So I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.